Uh, we will we'll dispense with the Pledge of Allegiance since we already did that in the study session. Um, we'll go ahead. Being called to order at 702 on the 25th of January, 2022. Uh, we'll jump right back to the item number four on the agenda. Pledge uh, changes to the agenda, Dr. Finch. Mr. Strong, we need to make a motion to excuse Mr. Thorner. All right, thank you. Do we have a motion to excuse Mr. Thorner? So moved. We have a motion to uh, uh, excuse uh, uh, Board Director Mr. Michael Thorner. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Uh, thank you there, Mr. Mogul. We'll go ahead and now proceed to item four, changes to the agenda. Dr. Finch? No changes to the agenda. Thank you. Communications, school board appreciation. All right, we're going to start off with the proclamation from the governor for school board appreciation month. Uh, we'll have a short video that's been produced for you. And then we'll have some certificates. We have certificates for each of the board members. And we have a special certificate for Mike Meyer for 20 years of service to the West Valley School District. So first we'll start with the proclama proclamation. Whereas the mission of Washington's public school system is to assure that all students achieve at high levels and possess the knowledge and skills to be responsible members of a de democratic society who enjoy productive and satisfying lives. And whereas Washington's 295 locally elected school boards and nine elected educational service district boards are the core of the public education governance system in our state, and whereas the districts and regions that they lead serve more than 1 million students and have combined annual budget of over 15 billion and employ approximately 120,000 people. And whereas school districts play a crucial role in promoting student learning and achievement. And budgets and setting clear standards of accountability for all involved. And whereas school district directors are directly accountable to the residents in their districts and regions serving as a vital link between members of the community and their schools. And whereas school directors and educational service districts provide a passionate voice for advocacy for public schools and the welfare of school children. And whereas it is appropriate to recognize school districts as outstanding volunteers and champions for public education. Now, therefore, I, Jay Inslee, governor of the state of Washington, do hereby proclaim January, 2022 as school board recognition month. So thank you for your service. And now we're going to have a short video, so I think the board will need to uh, go to the side so that we can see the video screen. Look at us. Meyer, thank you. It's your regular one, and Mike Meyer. 20 years of service to Mike Meyer. Thank you. And on behalf of the board, I'd like to say to those students in the video and all students, thank you very much for the recognition. Uh, some of those videos were very adorable just to watch. And so uh, 
we notice it, it, it warms the heart just to know that, you know, they pay attention to all the things that go on outside of the classroom. So thank you students and, and parents as well. <coughs> all right, um, next in communications, we have- Oh, sure. And in addition, I'd just like to say a special thanks to Mr. Meyer. Uh, that's no small feat to serve on the school board for 20 years. So thank you on behalf of your colleagues for all your work for 20 years. So congratulations. Another half. Thank you very much. Okay, now you can move on there, Peter, if you have All something. right. Well, the district received uh, two letters, one from OSPI and one from the State Board of Education. So I wanted to share that with the board and have that in our official board packet uh, for our records for the future. So the Migrant Education Program received recognition from OSPI because of the work of our staff to identify students who qualify for the program and to increase the number of students that have been identified. So that means more students are being served by the Migrant edu Education Program this year. So that was a letter of recognition from OSPI. Next, there was a letter from the State Board of Education. Um, there was an announcement of school districts who had received grants for mastery-based learning. And so the work in West Valley at our Innovation Center was recognized and there's a grant for $40,000 that will be used for professional development for staff uh, to move forward with the mastery-based learning program that we have in place and to expand that for the future, including the, the fourth pathway that we've identified, the robotics and agri-science that we'll be offering next year. I would like to uh, share with the board that uh, I noticed that the Alma School District was also uh, recognized with mastery-based learning. That's where our uh, former director of uh, innovation, Chris Nesmith, is now the superintendent. So he's continuing that good work there in Alma, and we're continuing it here in West Valley. All right, that's all we have for communications. Thank you, Dr. Finch. So we will move on to public comment of non-discussion agenda items. Uh, for those of you who have not seen the actual written agenda, we have expanded the individual talk time now to five minutes uh, with the total time allotted for, <laughs> the total amount of time allotted of 30 minutes. So for those that have signed up, um, we have five comments. So again, five minutes per person. Um, and we do want to make sure that we have time for any online comments as well. In fact, I think uh, just given that we have folks here, do we have any online comments or, or public discussion items from anyone uh, via Zoom? One, okay. Can we get that person up? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi there, my name is Megan Mock. I'm a speech language pathologist in the West Valley School District. I am coming to you tonight as a voter in the community. And I'm pretty sure I represent a pretty large portion of the community. I have always voted yes for levies and bonds and I've always wanted to be part of making this school district a better place. But this has been a tough year and West Valley has let me down quite a bit. So I'm voting no on the levy this year. I realize that this isn't a, a new uh, tax or um, that, and that I also realize that it is for uh, kids programming, but I also feel like there's been no other way to get the district's attention. And therefore um, this no vote is, is because the kids deserve better than what you're offering. Uh, the district has been so focused on their COVID money and their DIE programming that they have lost touch with what the community wants, which is for the teachers to actually educate the kids. Whoever created the levy uh, flyer that went out to the community uh, was very misleading. Those were old pictures with maskless staff and students smiling and enjoying uh, learning, but that's not what it looks like right now in our schools. And this is the kind of deception that I'm, I, uh, our district is getting all too good at. That is not how things are inside right now. They are much more bleak. And not because people are worried about COVID. So until 
I will be voting or in, until some of these things change, I will be voting no for West Valley. Until masks are no longer required, I will vote no. Until unvaccinated staff are no longer being discriminated against, I will vote no. Until unvaccinated parents are no longer discriminated against, I will vote no. Until student athletes are no longer forced to get COVID tests to play sports, I will vote no. While COVID testing and COVID vaccinations are being administered on school grounds, I will vote no. While there is a COVID violation snitch email line, I will vote no. While students with penises are using the girls' bathrooms, I will vote no. While grammatically incorrect and made up pronouns are being taught at school, I will vote no. While the gay pride flag is being taught at school, I will vote no. While the WVEA's president's husband sits on the school board, I will vote no. Thank you very much. Okay, <clears throat> thank you for your comment. Uh, we will end that one and move on to the first person on the list here. So uh, Jill Armstrong, if you would step up to the microphone, wherever it is and speak. <coughs> high school and it is an amazing opportunity to witness what they go through the change that happens to them in the past the JRTC program has always found a way to take care of their own financially and in whatever other ways that are needed to make sure that our cadets have their basic needs met so they were able to compete with no worries we have a lot of students who are borderline poverty and and they have a hard time just coming up for meals for traveling and so on um, but now with this house bill that has been passed last year and a possibility of the levy not being passed, it will be nearly impossible. And the outcome and the effects will be devastating if this levy does not pass. Um, I'm not sure, where's Joe at? Is Joe down here? Mm -hmm. yeah. or, or anybody, I mean, does anybody have the hourly rate when we use a bus, how much it costs hourly from the district? Peter? Uh, well, this is just public comment here. So if you have a question, I can get back to you on that. I, I mean, because I'm guessing it's about $30 an hour. 
And when we travel on our drill meets down to Oregon, the bus starts at 10 o'clock in the morning and that's when the fee starts. And we usually leave Friday about 10, get back Sunday about 12. That's 50 hours times 30 hours. And I cannot imagine our kids having to fork over that many. You know, they can't do without this levy money. And the same goes for the kids that are in sports and the clubs, you know, and, and the choir and the band. I'm not sure how they're gonna be able to provide. Um, for those of you out there who will vote no, because you wanna stick it to the board members and the administration for other matters, that will not have the effect that you are aiming for. At the end of the day, on February 8th at 8 p.m., they will still have their jobs and their salaries. It'll be the children that you're sticking it to and hurting the most. They're gonna be the ones feeling the consequences of your votes. And in closing, I would like it to be known that I myself as a voter will be voting to maintain the levy. I will be voting yes for the kids. And I hope those that are undecided, they can find it in their heart to vote for what our children need. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will move on to the next person, Heather Harrison. I am the parent of a seventh grader and a sophomore and have had many great teachers and experiences here at West Valley. But we have had a problem this year at the mid-level campus. We filed a formal complaint, which all parents can do when there is a problem. I'm concerned about a teacher teaching her beliefs, which have nothing to do with curriculum on students. Board policy 2000 clearly states that this is not acceptable. It is also concerning that during our meeting with board members, when voicing our concern that one of the board members' wife was representing the teacher we were complaining about as a union president, this seems like a huge conflict of interest for parents. Okay, thank you for your comments. Um, moving on, uh, Barb Ward. First of all, I won't be using the five minutes, but I appreciate the board changing that policy listening to us, so I appreciate that. Uh, homeroom in high school used to mean the Pledge of Allegiance, attendance checks, and announcements. Well, not anymore. At West Valley High School, homeroom, or Ram Pride, is being used to push, well, that's the question. Uh, the West Valley High School Martin Luther King Jr. celebration plans for January 2022. Equity and inclusion. Each week of January, we will provide students and staff with opportunities to examine what these words mean to them and to our district community, which would be me. So this is being done during Ram Pride no curriculum from any other classes, not really what the parents know. Um, that sounds great. Equity and inclusion, we've heard it, I've counted six times tonight, we've heard that phrase. So week one um, is on pronouns and inclusive language. I took the opportunity to look over and read the materials which our students have on their Chromebook and found the resource section under the item and read it. And I'm just gonna, I could pick a lot of things, but I just wanna leave you with this statement. It says, and this is on the program, choosing to ignore or disrespect someone's pronouns is not only an act of oppression, but can be considered an act of violence. Does that message, create unity, calm, understanding in our district? Does that message convey an attitude of inclusion for all points of view? 
I'll let you answer that question. I've been asking a number of times, and I'm going to ask this same question. I am asking our school district to get back to the business of basic education and out of the business of indoctrination. Thank you. Okay, thank you again for your comments. Uh, we will move on to Mr. Michael Moore. Okay, Are you, no comment? All right, moving on to uh, Mr. Ryan Matthews. Thank you very much. Um, I guess I want to first say that um, I really, really appreciate some of the comments and I encourage you to continue to bring your comments both privately through phone calls and emails and publicly to these kinds of events. Um, I want to know more about what happens in our district and any parent who finds stories good and bad or good and concerning, it's your right to bring those forward. So please do that. From a levy perspective, the levy funds a tremendous amount of very important opportunities for our students. It provides the tools that our staff need in order to deliver an excellent educational program. Citizens for Better Schools strongly supports the levy because we recognize that it continues to build on a foundation of excellence. We were excited this weekend to get more than 5,000 door hangers out. You've seen throughout the community signs that represent the positivity that comes with a supported levy. Losing a levy doesn't just undermine the today, it undermines the future. So I'm not going to tell anybody that they have to vote yes, but I'd ask that you become informed and that you clearly understand what the levy provides. The district provides information. The Citizens for Better Schools is clearly here to say, please vote yes, please support our kids, please support our staff. Thank you. Okay, again, thank you for your, your comment as well as all those who commented tonight. I guess we do have a couple of minutes. Is there anyone else that would like to provide a comment? Seeing no hands or hearing none, anyone else uh, via Zoom? Okay, we will go on and move to the next item on the agenda, which would be uh, approval of consent of the consent agenda. Um, a motion for approval of the consent agenda from anyone? I'll move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. I think that includes all these other items. So we'll move on to action items. Yep, number eight. Number eight, so <laughs> approval of travel requests. Uh, does anybody have anything they wanna pull out or discuss? If not, uh, I'll entertain a motion for approval of travel requests. I move to approve the travel request. Okay, we have a motion to approve the travel request. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All same sign. Motion carries for zero. All right, moving on to item number nine. Items arising. Uh, anyone? Oh, no, we're back to uh, B. We have uh, approval of policy, first reading. Oh, excuse me, I overlooked that. Thank you, Dr. Finch. Mm -hmm, that's okay. All right, um, so approval of policy additions and revisions, first reading. There are four items there. Do we need to take them apart or can we take them all together? We can take them all together. And this is all uh, language that's recommended by the Washington State School Directors Association. There's no changes by the district. All right, then I will entertain a motion for item 8B, approval of policy additions and revisions. There's four of them there, 21, 26, 32, 46, 35, 20, and 5,400. So moved. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mokul. We have a motion and and we will go ahead and vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Four zero. Now we will move on to item number. Uh, we have letter oh, C. Have letter C. I'm yep. sorry. That's School good. owned vehicle use. So again, everyone saw the memo there. Yep. So this is the annual approval of the use of a school owned vehicle by the director of facilities, Tim Critchlow, okay. and director of transportation, Jamie Schmidt. Those are the only two in the district. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a motion on that. Would someone like to make a motion to approve item C, uh, approval of school owned vehicle use? Thank you. We'll go ahead and vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 same sign. Motion carries four zero. Now we will get to item nine, <laughs> items arising on the agenda. So does anyone have anything under item nine? Okay, we'll go on to item 10, reports. Uh, back to Finch. Well, it's just it was really encouraging in the various school reports to see the, basically the shout outs, the gratitude that was expressed for all the staff pulling together during this time of COVID and, and just um, even gratitude across departments. So I, I know I saw one that had gratitude for our IT department, all the work they've been doing during this time. So just really encouraging to see the gratitude that I'm hearing from across the district. Okay, thank you. Anything else in the report? Then we'll go ahead and move on to superintendent's report. Again, Dr. Finch. Well, my superintendent's report this uh, month was just to hi highlight all the work that is happening in the district to keep our schools open. Um, all the work that was done in the fall to increase our substitute pool. Um, uh, our principals had made recommendations of paraeducators who could get their emergency certificated sub uh, credential. And so now during this time of the Omicron uh, wave, we do have an increased sub pool. And so we've been able to keep our schools open. We've had uh, administrators um, dropping everything and, and helping to cover classes. Um, we've had just across the board, uh, people pulling together and doing what it takes to keep the schools open. So I just really wanted to highlight that. Also, I wanna share with you that we did have um, like an unannounced uh, inspection, you might say, from the Yakima County uh, Health Department. And they were just giving us really positive feedback on the fact that uh, students and staff were following through and following the safety protocols. So it was just really encouraging to have an unannounced visit at uh, two of our schools and to have that positive feedback that we had about um, staff and students following the COVID safety protocols. So that was very encouraging. Thank you, Dr. Finch. Um... Item 12, board report, board development, anyone? I, I just I'd like to follow up a little bit on what Brian said. I really want to thank the West Valley Citizens for Better Schools for the efforts that they've put forth so far. I'm sure for the next two weeks, I'm gonna be going like crazy also. Uh, we need all the support and the help that we can get. It's gonna be a challenging, I think it's gonna be a challenging levy and we need everybody's support that we possibly can have. And I think Ryan and, and Michael and the rest of that group need to be committed. Terry Prescott, for sure, for going to, to all of the staff meetings. And they've done the best they possibly could to provide us with the best opportunity. And I thank them. All right, thank you, Mr. Jager. And that was well said and certainly well-deserved. All right, uh, if there are no more items. Okay. I do have one, um, sorry. Um, my children are in their first years with West Valley Swish. Um, and uh, we opened up our, our first season this weekend um, to see the number of West Valley Swish teams that are involved in the AEU program um, was amazing. Uh, the nominal fee that our kids are having to pay um, for the uniform and for the opportunity to play in, in three events through the years um, or through this year, um, the, the money that they pay uh, doesn't equal the opportunity that they're getting. Uh, Borton Fruit um, and Bergen Printing um, are doing a great job of supporting those teams. And with the, the number of kids that were out there, 
Um, I have two kids, one a third grade girl and a second grade boy playing. And um, I know that there's at least one more West Valley Swish second grade boys team, but um, I think I saw three or four West Valley Swish teams myself this weekend. So the, uh, uh, the involvement of our kids in, in the basketball program with the support of Borden Fruit and, and Bergen Printing is, is pretty amazing. All right, thank you. We will go ahead at this point and move on to item 13, the closed session. We have two items there, closed session and executive session. I'm going to allow 15 minutes for each session for a total of 30 minutes. And that will bring us back here, let's just say at 8.05. I'll tell you to adjourn. Yes, with no action. With no action. Thank you. All right, we'll go ahead and move on.
Oh, my love me well. Yeah, that's a memory, you know. It is. It is. It's a lot of, um, a lot of years and a lot of work. I got to give a couple of them. It's probably going to be more. It is. Well, so, everybody, make sure if there's any documents, some, 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 you know, every day, so I've got some strength and things that I can do. So, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to use a particular pen sign at least these uh, the But I have a pen, but I know you like that black pen. Do you have one? Do Yeah, airline tickets to Hawaii. <laughs> Those are just your ones. Yeah, thanks for the green here. Yeah. Super cheap and private. 